All right. Yeah. yeah. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sunday evening uh, Bible study. We're glad that you've joined us. Uh, God has been good to us. My wife and I are fresh back from the mission trip in Jamaica. We're still getting our time bodies correct, but we thank God for the several days we spent there over about 10 days over there. Uh, props and hello to the people of Spanish town. Um, received a lot of the blessings from the group Operation Big Blessing. Y'all keep them in prayer as uh, a lot was done for the people in Spanish Town, Jamaica. Uh, we were delayed a little bit on our flight because of barrel the hurricane hitting. Kept our flight back a day or so, but we were able to get there and do some great things for the people there. My wife and I led out in the vacation Bible school for the young people there. We had a great time. And God was indeed good. This today, June 21, is a very special day. First of all, it is a full moon. It's the full moon called in July the Buck Moon. Uh, you might be curious, but stories have it that it's called the Buck Moon because it's uh, it represents strength, power, and togetherness. But it coincides with, this is what they say, those that study the, the, the animal kingdom and nature said that this is when the the um, antelope, I want to make sure I say that right, grow new antlers. They grow big and tall, so the, therefore it's coinciding with strength and growth, et cetera, et cetera. Y'all can do the double check, do the homework on that, and figure out the buck full moon in July. Also, we had a, some would say, a strong president who got weaker over the time, physically and mentally, perhaps, but also today... As you were going about your day, President Joe Biden has chosen to not run for the presidency for the next term. Um, so now we'll see what happens going forward. It definitely is a new day, a new time. Fresh new blood will be going after the presidency of the United States of America. Make sure that you have that as your top priority, perhaps in these days that we live in, to be able to pray that God will choose the leader right for this time for our nation. God bless you. Today, we want to go to Genesis 45. I'll probably just do four, uh, 15 minutes of this, but you got to understand the key part of this awesome, awesome uh, reunion back here. So I'm going to try to read a few verses and then we'll get into what the Bible is suggesting for today. Um, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to teach and to examine the word of the living God. We thank you for all the students on the line, watching, observing, observing. We pray that you will give us new insight as to how you control the lives and decision of people, even though it doesn't look like you're involved at all. Thank you for this opportunity. Bless us, Holy Spirit with the teaching of this word, illuminate this passage that we may come to know you better in Jesus' name, amen. All right, Genesis 45, beginning with verse one, then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him and he cried out, make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers made himself known to his brothers. He wept aloud. The Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him for they were dismayed uh, in his presence. Um, and Joseph said to his brothers, please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years, the famine has been in the land and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he made me 
a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. All right, we're going down now. Verse nine, hurry, go to my father and say to him, thus says your son, Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near to me, you and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your herds and all that you have. There I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. For there are still five years of famine. And behold, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that is in my that it is in my mouth that speaks to you. So you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of all that you have seen, and you shall hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept on his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brothers and wept over them, and after that, his brothers talked with him. What an amazing, amazing reunion of these brothers. You know we've been going through the book of Genesis for several weeks now, and what we've come to in the 45th chapter is that Joseph has now revealed himself to his brothers. Recently, the brothers bowed down to him. They worship him, but they did not. They worship him, but they did not know that it was their brother. How did Joseph get there ahead of his brothers? Well, you know, the review says that they sold him. They, they, kind of were hating on him because he had this coat of many colors. He seemed to be the favorite of Jacob. Um, and so they hated on him, worked out plans, planned to kill him. But uh, they believe Reuben stepped in, saved him, and they sold him to Ishmaelites eventually. And now he makes it all the way to Egypt. He goes to prison out of what happened with Potiphar's wife, which was nothing, but they still blamed him goes to pit prison, he's there a couple of years, he gets, tells dreams, and now he's forgotten about. So now we come to this part of the story where he's taken out of the prison, he tells Pharaoh, seven years of famine are headed your way, store up. And Pharaoh thought that was such a great idea that he would store up in these good seven, good seven years and then seven famine years. And now we come to this part of the story where Jacob told his sons, the famine is hit. Please go to Egypt and buy some grain. And now they're encountering their brother a couple of times without him knowing. We come to this revelation. First of all, I want you to understand this story that Joseph decides to reveal himself to his brothers. Revelation. Revelation means, if you look up the meaning, something that was unknown and now is made known. Remember, that's a key part of Revelation. Something that was unknown and now is made to be known. So the brothers were encountering their brother, Joseph, but they did not recognize him as their brother because I suppose he looked Egyptian. He was dressed in the Egyptian garb. He was the prince. He was a leader. They're thinking that Joseph is probably dead. So that's where we come to this story. And Joseph, the Bible says, for the revelation part, he could not restrain himself anymore. Hallelujah. Time to let his brothers know what time it is. It's the real time for showing what you all have not been able to see. God is able to test you and me to reveal at the right times of our lives his providence for us at that moment his gift for us at that moment, the opportunity he has at that moment to open our eyes and we see things we've not seen before. So Jacob could not restrain himself anymore. I just want to encourage you that sometimes as you're going along trying to figure out some things, it seems like a different atmosphere, a different season in your life. And you're wondering, where is God? But here in this story, it shows that God was all along orchestrating the moves in Joseph's life and his brother's life and his father's life. 
So Jacob now says to them simply because they didn't recognize him. Watch this. I am Joseph, your brother. Come on now. I am Joseph, your brother. Would you say it's been about two decades now that, that he begins to say, I am Joseph, your brother. And the brothers begin, uh, as you see in those first couple of verses, first of all, they don't say anything. They're just sort of stunned. They're just sitting there because the revelation hasn't hit the reality part. They heard something that he was their brother. Now they had to catch up with 20 years of absence, understanding he could be dead, understanding they sold him. They have no idea what happened to him. Now, after that, the revelation comes. I am Joseph, your brother. They sit there, they go through some things, and he says, now listen, we are two years into this famine, and there's got we've got five more years of famine. Here's what I want you to do. I am Joseph, your brother. Come on now, somebody. No matter how deep the pain was that he got sent, sold, directed, to go somewhere else, Joseph decides now to act like a like a, a symbol, a symbol of Jesus. I am Jesus, your brother. I am the Christ, the Messiah, your brother. I am Joseph, your brother. And what I want you to do is go back, tell my father, my pops, the land of plenty of food in this famine, five more years, bring him here. We're going to designate a plot of land or a space for you in Goshen. My friends, that's what was going on. Joseph said, now listen, as he saw their faces stunned. You know why? Because here's what happens when you and I may have done something to someone and now we see them years later. We keep waiting for the punishment. We keep waiting for the hammer to come down. We keep waiting. We run long enough. The guilt has been in us. We don't know what's happened to our past sin, our past mistake. And now we get confronted with the very person we may have hurt. Here's where God does to us. He looks at his brothers and says, do not be mad at yourself. You cannot get a greater blessing than God saying, or Joseph in this case saying, do not be angry with yourself or bewildered or frustrated or, or mad about how things turned out. You see, it wasn't after all you that sent me. Uh, it was God that sent me. Joseph is now having a revelation himself through this whole process as he becomes second in command of Egypt, that it was the purpose of God to send him ahead of his brothers to preserve the way. He says in the word that I was here to preserve a posterity for you. Come on, somebody. See, when you get damaged by someone, sometimes the best advantage is to assume, is to make the connection, I should say, that maybe God is active in this thing and that maybe he has sent me here to prepare a way for those who supposedly injured me. So I want to I want you I want to make that point really really clear. Sometimes your pain and your anger at the people that hurt you might be that God has allowed it as the story has right now for you to be able to be in a position to turn around and begin to help them. So Joseph says, I was sent ahead to develop and prepare a posterity for you. So what did Joseph do? He had the power to do it, which he may not have had before he had the power to do it. He had the power to designate a land, a, a designate a space for his family to come from Canaan to Egypt and that they may grow and multiply and be themselves in this family that has five more years left. He's saying to his father and his brothers, you will not make it out there if you stay away, because the famine is going to hit hard. Come on now, look at God. The famine is going to hit hard. Come here and grow your family here. Hurry back home and tell my dad that I'm alive. You saw it in the verses. The brothers go, now realizing they're having a conversation with him. He has kissed Benjamin, his only really fully blood brother. Um, 
but he kisses him. They cry on each other's neck. They're so glad that the revelation is bringing joy, happiness, relief, and peace. Then the Bible says he kissed all of his brothers. You know that's a great greeting, that these are the same people that, that perhaps mistreated you. And in your dream, you said that, that, that one day they will all bow to you, and that has happened already. Now he's treating them with the kindness that God treated him with. Here's a lesson for all of us. Wow, he kissed all of his brothers. He reached out, he touched them, they hugged, and he sat down and had a conversation, probably reminiscing, probably Joseph telling the story. You know, when y'all sold me here, they brought me here. I went through the Potter's, uh, Potiphar's wife issue. Um, then I they threw me in prison. I sat there. But I was able to tell the dream of the baker and the butler and all that came out of that. Then I said, remember me, man, when you get up there, they forgot me for two more years. But the Bible says God was with Joseph. Every time Joseph is now realizing God is with me. What an exciting moment. He used to tell his brothers, man, they left me here. They forgot. I still was in charge of the prison. I did my work. And then one day Pharaoh had the dream about the famine coming up. Seven good years, seven bad years. And I, the, the 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 remaining brother I helped remembered and said, wow, there's a Hebrew. He brought me up. I told him to dream the interpretation. And Pharaoh has made me into this spot. That's how I got here. Come on now. Run back and tell Pops. Run back and tell Dad that I'm alive. The brothers scurry back. They're happy on this journey. They get back to Dad and they say, Joseph is alive. Now he's been told he's alive, he's dead, he's this and that, but this time Joseph would say, I don't want to hear any more pain. I want to hear any more pain. What I want to hear is, what was that? Are y'all y'all helping me? Any comments? All right. So Joseph says, wow. Um, Jacob says, no, I don't want to hear him. Jacob says he's alive because the brothers have all witnessed 11 of them have witnessed that their brother is alive. And Jacob's countenance changes. Come on, somebody. That he now, the son that he thought was dead, is now alive. Mm, the one that he thought was out of his midst. A lot of grieving years. A lot of moments of reflection. A lot of memory time. And now, God says, let's open up the revelation. Let's let Jacob in on what's been going on. Daddy's real happy. The father's real happy. They gather up the family. He says, let me go and seek my son that I thought was dead and is now alive. So the brothers make that journey to come from Canaan all the way to Egypt. They're bringing dad. Now, dad says something very special. Let me go and see my son that I may die. Wow. So he's up in age, wants to see his son. He wants to come, and now the journey comes back. Tonight, tonight we're going to leave it at this point tonight. Come back next Sunday, 6 o'clock p.m., as we continue this study on Genesis 45. I want to encourage you to read more, to study more on the biblical points and the salient spiritual uh, message that God is sending us through this meeting of the brothers and how uh, the uh, land was given to them that they may grow and be able to prosper um, in, in the future. It took one man who was mistreated to be able to go ahead and prepare the way. He now sees the revelation. I want to say this again. Have you been hurt? Or ask you the question, have you been hurt? Have you been damaged? Have you been mistreated? Um, have you allowed forgiveness to come over you? Have you allowed that the, that the situation that happened may not have been necessarily human direction, human intention, but God used those circumstances because he was directing your life all along. Very hard to kind of take for some of you, I understand. For some of us, it's hard to take because that pain is so deep. But I'm here to tell you, turn your pain into the questioning of God. What shall I do in the midst of this 
mistreatment? What, God, do you want me to do in the midst of being tossed aside? What, God, is my role in, in the life that you would have me to do to be able to advance, to be able to improve, to be able to prosper, to be able to represent you in the circumstances that I am in today? May God bless you and bless me and all of our friends and family that we may grow to do the best we can and to be able to prepare the way for those who've heard us that they may also grow and multiply because what they meant for evil, we'll see that in the next um, lesson or next week, what they meant for evil, God meant for good. May God bless you, take care of you, and treat you the best way you can as you go through your season of figuring out your role in the mistreatment of people towards your life. Dear God, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Continue to bless us, lift us up, and God, we know that we give to you our pain, our agony of what others have done to us. Now what we're asking for, Lord, is for you, Holy Spirit, to reveal to us right now, what is the reason? Why am I where I'm at? Open up my eyes and help me to do your will in the midst of this being discarded by close people and close family. Thank you for this opportunity to serve you, Lord. I pray your anointing upon the students upon this uh, that are observing this today. Bless them. Bless their families, God. Pray that you'll give them power and deep understanding to forgive those who've hurt. May their assignment be made clear to them what they shall do this day, and that may they be used by you to relieve the, 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 the pain and agony of all the other people, that they may make their lives better. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that you've given to each and every one of us. We pray that we'll never leave your divine presence, but as we separate from one another, may the peace and the joy of God go with us today in the worthy name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. God bless everyone tonight. We'll see you next week on six o'clock to continue this beautiful story in Genesis 45.